Sometimes in life, you just have to ask the question. And this episode of the Loki podcast would never have happened had I not done that. I found a product, a tool for speakers online that I really liked the look of. When I took a bit of a deeper look into it, there were some additional products that also seemed interesting. So I bought the whole set. And then a while later, having signed up to a newsletter from the creators, they invited people to join them on a webinar, on a series of webinars explaining how to use these tools. I attended those webinars and afterwards contacted them to tell them how interesting it was, how much I liked the products, and to ask them if they might be interested in being guests on my podcast. To my surprise, they said yes. So the following conversation is my chat with the publishers, Sefiro, and two amazing guys called Matteo and Andrea, and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Loki Podcast with John Ball from Present Influence. We use Buzzsprout to upload and distribute the Loki Podcast to all major podcasting networks. If you're thinking of starting your own podcast, check out the link to Buzzsprout in the show notes. You could start your podcast today. Welcome back. And this week we have some special guests who I invited and was very surprised when they said yes, that they were going to come and be on the show. Uh, please welcome to the podcast. I'm going to say this correctly. Hopefully Andrea Binasco and Matteo Di Pascale. Is that perfect? Correct? That's perfect. Hey, wonderful. One of the reasons why I was so excited to speak to you guys, I'm really pleased that you said yes, is because you have these amazing cards, sets of cards that uh, I just happened to see an ad online and buy them and really um, I bought them for the public speaking cards that you've got and I'll explain a bit more, we'll explain a bit more about that as we get further in but then um, the whole pack is actually really fascinating and you did some webinars recently where I got to come we got to come and learn a bit more about how to use them and why you did all this and um, I want to find out from you, first of all, tell, tell us a bit more about what it is you're actually doing, who you are, and, uh, and what you've created and why. Big questions. Yeah, very big question. I think Matteo can start. <laughs> thank you. Uh, hello, and thank you for having us. Um, so, basically, we are Sefirot. Uh, we're an independent publisher uh, that is uh, focused on uh, creative tools. And we started for uh, because we had some tools uh, with some products for creativity, and we couldn't find uh, uh, the right publisher for us. And so, at some point, uh, a couple of years ago, we invented one. And uh, I think that it's right to say I started with cards because in uh, 2012 uh, I created these uh, cards that are called Intuity, and uh, they are for creativity. Then, together with Andrea, uh, we created the Fabula, that is another tool for storytelling. And, and then at some point, we also made uh, Cicero, that is the tool for public speaking that, you are, that we are going to talk about today. And I've, we come from different backgrounds. Uh, I am a designer and a writer. I worked as, a, as an art director and a UX designer for companies uh, uh, in Milan, uh, China, in Amsterdam, and Andrea. Yeah, I'm a teacher, and uh, I, I'm very passionate in uh, literature, and that's why we came together. Basically, actually, we are friends since a long time, but uh, we start working together on Fabula, that is the one that you see behind Matteo, by the way, yeah. uh, and uh, it's uh, that is basically a tool for storytelling. For storytelling. So what we did is uh, to uh, work together to produce design that uh, the deck, and as Matteo was saying, he was already into the card business, let's say like that. <laughs> and uh, uh, so he had some expertise about that. We produced that. We did a uh, Kickstarter as he did uh, with uh, Intuity. It went uh, well. Then we got contact. We uh, a public speaking expert from Italy, we are based in Italy, a public speaking expert from Rome actually contacted us uh, saying, ah, I've seen uh, Fabula, it's uh, wonderful, why don't we do something uh, uh, for public speaking specifically? Right. 
and that's why we created then Cicero, that is uh, basically a canvas uh, made, yeah. uh, made of cards for public speaking. They're, they're fantastic. I, I really love the cards. And uh, I'm going to go right back to the to the very beginning then. What what was, uh, and this is really, I guess, for, for Matteo with the Intuity Pack, what was the inspiration uh, that made you think, yeah, let's have some cards that are going to help people get into their creativity? Yeah, I was, uh, I, I was young and exhausted already <laughs> <laughs> with creativity because I was uh, studying at the Polytechnic University of Milan. And uh, they all talked about creativity and I thought that that wasn't creativity at all. And so uh, I wanted something that was uh, uh, not an equation. I, want, I wanted something more intuitive. Okay. And so I came out with the idea of uh, a sort of a game to help people uh, uh, find something uh, um, yeah, in, in some way more creative. I mean, more uh, uh, that could help them more to express uh, themselves uh, in a in a better way. Right. I, I really, I really like it. But the, the cards are very unusual, and the the artwork is is really quite beautiful as well. I mean, you can see a lot of development and care went into creating them. What what sort of ideas or or uh, history or thoughts did you pull together in order to to create that pack? Okay, uh, what I did, I uh, basically studied uh, all the main uh, uh, tarot uh, authors, so all, all the main people that yeah, studied the tar tarot cards uh, in, uh, in history. And I tried to find, uh, because of all the archetypes behind the cards, so they come from tarot cards, I tried to, uh, to find uh, the, the essence, so the main archetype behind. And then uh, I... Uh, I found a way to communicate it uh, visually so you can uh, actually feel a little bit of the meaning of the card and then you can have uh, a powerful incentive. Great. You, you have uh, uh, on, your, on one of your websites, you have the, a link to uh, a site where you can sort of play with the cards yourself and see at least the, uh, the principal cards, right? And, yeah. uh, it's and a, it's an uh, online experience. <laughs> It was, it's really cool. I had, I had a play that I didn't even realize it was there until I, I came on the webinar with you, but it's actually very nice. And, uh, and so you, you can use it in the same way that some people might actually use a, a, a tarot reading to think about where you've been, where you are right now and where you want to go and just use the images to, to get creative about what, what it means to you and, uh, and how you feel about that, as well as having some guidance from the images that you select as well. And um, that was that was a really interesting idea and 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 very cool. What what other sort of uses have you discovered with the with these cards, or, or do you, would you encourage people to be using it for? Uh, I, okay, they uh, they are born for um, for personal use, for sure. So it's uh, truly important that people can uh, have a creative goal. Then uh, um, we tried. Uh, uh, in the companies, so for facilitating workshops, for uh, um, I, do you say, in, internal conflicts inside the teams. Uh, so that's another way to, uh, I mean, maximize the power of uh, a meeting, for instance, or for assessment uh, for HR. And then uh, I know about a lot of uh, psychologists that are using them to break the ice with, uh, um, with their clients. And uh, uh, so, I mean, the, the uses are very, uh, I think they're not, they're not very limited. I mean, they're, they're, a lot of people are using them uh, in uh, uh, a lot of different ways. And uh, some of those ways, we don't even know about them. Quite possibly. I mean, I, I, I work in the coaching industry as well, and I've been coaching um, people in, in different life areas for many years, and I could, I could see applications in coaching for that as well. And I can, I'm sure other people in work in other areas can see applications or even just personal with different interests can, uh, can have a think about that. So I actively recommend people go and have a, have a play with your online resource and get a taste of the cards, but uh, obviously get your own pack as well, because I think it's a, a really nice tool. When you two came together then, you had an idea for doing something more about storytelling. What was that? I mean, have you been writing books yourselves or have you, 
was it something that you you particularly cared about uh, yeah well uh, we both had the passion for literature uh, Matteo for writing I also uh, also for me writing is a very you know a very uh, very beautiful hobby <laughs> but uh, uh, Matteo is even more into writing than me but we share this passion of uh, studying stories and uh, we wanted basically to create uh, at the beginning something that we might uh, have used so we wanted to create something a tool that uh, could have been eff effective to help writers and why not also teach us to analyze uh, stories and to build up stories sure. so we looked a little bit into the uh, uh, the patterns of the stories, of the recurring patterns of every story. And we studied a little bit uh, of that, obviously. And where we came, uh, we came out with a uh, fabula that is based on basically uh, some of the most uh, common and uh, well-established uh, narrative structures like uh, the hero journey and the triad structure. And uh, where well, we wanted to create uh, to create a tool, basically. And that's why we use card as well, because they help you visualize the, the whole story, uh, have a look at that, and uh, those are designed uh, according to design thinking principle. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, they're quite, quite different to the, to the Intuity cards in that they're you know, more, more written, a bit less visual, and, but they're, they're designed to have a, a bit of a different structure. And, and, and I, I do personally think the, the world needs more stories. We, we run on stories right? and there's always stories going on. Uh, and I do think one of the things that makes us, hopefully makes us more interesting as people is when we have good stories to tell. So I think this is a whether you're writing a book or not is it is probably a good tool to work with and mm -hmm. um, could is it specifically then for in your heads for when you created it for people who were writing books or really did you already have the thing of well anyone who wants to pull, pull stories together can help structure it a bit better with these kinds of tools i think that uh, everybody can uh, uh, can have some uh, uh, i mean can can have some fun and can uh, find find it useful to uh, also to analyze stories or to build uh, any kind of story. So uh, we also made some workshops uh, uh, trying to use the same uh, uh, structure to make like uh, uh, brand stories or uh, uh, any other kind of storytelling also for filmmakers for making a, a commercial. It's uh, basically it's al almost all the same. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Fabula is much more for uh, writers and screenwriters, and that's uh, th that's for sure. And also for uh, uh, editors in uh, publishing houses, because they, then they can uh, really have uh, the the old picture of a story. And I I think that what we what we did with uh, uh, Fabula and Cicero, it's uh, it's like we we took a lot of uh, uh, theory. Really, a lot of probably like uh, the, the theory that you can find in uh, four or five books, and then we we created a, a structure based uh, on all that theory. So That's when cool. you get Fabula, when you get Ciso, you get uh, a, a super easy access to a lot of knowledge that is uh, synthesized. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I love reading books about storytelling. And just recently, I read, uh, I just finished reading an amazing book by a, um, a storyteller called Matthew Dix. And it's, uh, if you haven't seen his book, it's, it's really cool. It's called Storyworthy. And, uh, and and he just gives away some really great secrets in doing that. And there's some other, there's a lot of really good stuff out there as well. But when it actually comes to putting your own ideas down and and constructing a story that the structure of it is really important and what I like about the way you've designed these cards is that you can actually lay it out uh, like uh, for people who are seeing the video of this so you can see behind Mateo you've got a card stuck to your wall there as that laying out laying out a story is, is that just an example of how to use them or are you actually uh, creating a story there no no I, I, I have them because I always write so <laughs> 
we, we actually uh, we use our tools. Yeah, yeah. Intuit it as well. Well, that's yeah. great. You should. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And uh, what what kind of writing do you do for yourself? Uh, I write uh, fiction. So it's like in this right moment I'm writing a, a book about uh, uh, magical stories in Turin, that is the city where I live in. Sounds good. Have you had feedback from people who are who are writers or getting into writing about using about using your cards to help them? Yeah, yeah, we constantly have feedbacks from. Uh, uh, we have to say that our. Uh, customers love us so uh, lots of time we receive a lot of love from them and also with uh, good feedbacks yeah right so I, I i fell in love with the cards myself when i started using them as soon as i started putting the the cicero pack together to to put some presentations down it just uh, just having that sort of visual sense of uh, what where the presentation is going be able to sort of see it uh, laid out in front of you like it is almost like a form of mind mapping really but uh, a, ni a nice visual representation of that and so when, when you started putting the the Cicero pack together you worked with a, a, a professional public speaker to do that what what sort of input or ideas was he was he putting in to form to form that deck well he basically is a teacher of public speaking and he's a public speaking uh, writer i don't know how to say is a person that writes public that writes speeches for politics and uh, people it's like that writer. it's a, like a ghost writer yeah exactly for speech public speaking writer. Uh, speech writer yeah and um, basically what we did was uh, to collect his material and uh, his uh, references as well i mean the, the books on which he studied and uh, to try just like Matteo was saying with Fabula, try to simplify them and give access to a complex structure in an easy tool. And uh, we, so we came, uh, we came up with this structure that, is, that helps uh, uh, both mind mapping the, the things that you have to say and also remembering them because that's also the important thing. I mean, we try to uh, bring to the real world the thoughts that you have while writing a speech, for instance. So um, just like uh, getting them more physical so you can handle them with more ease. And that's basically what we did. So it was a simplification, not a simplification, an um, organization of the of the work, of the, of the content. Yeah. Can, can you explain a bit more about, about the packs and, and how to use them for Because I know when I, when I first got mine, I was like, the, the instruction book is great, but it's really tiny. And I ended up going to, uh, ended up going to your site and, uh, and checking some more stuff out. And of course your webinars were very helpful. And I guess you probably got them posted up for, for people to, to, to watch replays as well. So it's good to learn how to use them. Can you maybe starting with the Cicero pack, explain how, how to actually use the pack? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, uh, it's made of 26 cards, basically, and uh, a booklet that is quite uh, thin, you're right, uh, and dense as well. And uh, uh, basically the idea is that there are steps in writing a speech. So there are different col cards, color, and each color represents a step that you have to to take while writing a speech. The very first thing that you have to do, uh, and uh, there are white cards that help you doing that, is to um, study the, the context uh, and the, the, the situation of the speech and the, the thing, and well, all the, different, all the different things that you have to consider before writing a speech or before preparing it. So basically, uh, it's a suggestion out to, to check, uh, to know who's gonna be your public, who's gonna listen to you, which language will you be using, and which language will be, would be, uh, would be the most effective one, and the, most, and the best. And also, how long will the speech last? And of course, so you don't get short. And all those factors that are just like external factors that you have to take into consideration before the speech. And then there are the red yeah, cards. What, what is your goal? Yeah, because uh, it's like uh, uh, most of the time we also uh, what we try to do is to take uh, all, all the knowledge from uh, these uh, public speaking experts and trying to understand 
also the, the main errors, the main mistake that people uh, make. So uh, usually, uh, most of the time, they, they don't they don't have a clear goal, so they don't really know what they are gonna say. And uh, the second error that they make most is to uh, start writing the speech, uh, thinking about the first uh, word they have to say. And so the second phase in Cicero uh, are the, the main points. So first of all, you make uh, uh, brainstorming with uh, everything that you want to say. And, uh, and then you try to, uh, to have uh, to organize the information in uh, one, two, three, four, five main points, uh, according to the length of, of the speech. And each main point is made of a key sentence. So it's uh, like a, a title. So the, um, yeah, you, you are, you're gonna say that uh, the, uh, the groom is, go is uh, very loyal. Okay, that's a title. And then you have, to, you have the facts because you, you need to, uh, to, to justify okay, why you said uh, that key phrase. Then you have transitions to move from one main point to, an, to another. And you have to consider a pattern. So how to present these main points. Uh, it's the moment when you can get creative because uh, you, according uh, on how you uh, structure your, your main points, you can have a different kind of, res of results uh, on your audience. And then it's like, uh, after you do that, you have uh, the core of your speech. So you know that the most important things that you have to say, at least you have them, now you have the content. Then we move to the last part, when you really create a canvas and you work on what's before and after. And so it's, uh, uh, you work with uh, tricks, uh, uh, way of convincing people. Uh, you try to, uh, to, to think about the engagement, so also the physical engagement the figure of speeches that Andrea loves so much. <laughs> yeah, all those things that help, uh, um, that helps uh, clarifying what you're saying, uh, but also uh, engaging the people. So all the use of the language, as you were saying, but also the use of uh, supports like slides or handouts and things like that. So you get the canvas on which you have the, you know, the, the draft of the speech from A to Z and uh, different levels of, uh, uh, let's say, of uh, finishing and uh, more detailed uh, uh, aspects, like voices as well. We also made up, we, we are not voice experts at all. We use the material of our expert, but we also spoke about uh, a little bit about the voices that you use in the speech and the importance of changing them and also the gestures that you, that you do and yeah. all those things. Yeah, so it's all relevant stuff. I was just wondering, I mean, could, could you combine using the Cicero and Fabula together if you were writing a non-fiction book or uh, do you think that could work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we are designing a deck for non-fiction. Uh, oh, great. So it's going to be one of the, it's going to be on the line. But yeah, basically, Cicero is just like uh, uh, just like a, a non-fiction fabula, a little bit, uh, just a little bit shorter because as, um, usually it's kind of difficult to have a, you know, most likely you're not going to have an academic speech in which you're going to speak for two hours. Yeah. And that's the case of an essay, for instance. There's much more information. So that's why we are thinking about a non-fiction okay. fabula. Sooner the better. I'm working on a non-fiction book. I could do with I could do with a bit of <laughs> a guiding structure like that. That would be good. Yeah, great. I, I was sort of thinking you know, one of um, one of the things that um, I, I particularly like in terms of um, the, the the cards and maybe working with them and mixing them using them together in some ways was um, that I think the archetype structures are very useful for uh, and Intuiti uses some of that that uh, sort of looking at when I do sort of game design for workshops or um, or for example um, you know just thinking about different personas and characters to work with or 
um, even sometimes designing interventions or transformation and stuff, to think about the particular personality um, archetypes more in a sort of Jungian archetype kind of way. Does that, does that make sense? Um, but uh, I don't know if that would be a, a good basis for a set of cards or not, but it's a, a, certainly an, an interesting idea. I was thinking, I wish you guys had cards for that the other day when I was doing some work in that area. <laughs> But, it, but it's pretty cool and I, I really like working with them. And, and one thing is that uh, one, one of the things I do in some of my work with clients is helping them design their own, their own talks, their own presentations. So being able to give them a tool like the, the Cicero cards, I've got my pack here, um, being able to give them a tool like that and have that layer out in front of them and, and have a bit of clarity and what to add in and what to take out is really, really useful. And I think it's very helpful in that these are these are great uh, great things. What well, uh, in terms of sales, where, where I mean, I know you have the cards available in in English and in Italian. What what are your plans for for growth and and scaling there? Uh, that, that, that's a really good question. We're um, we're finding a, a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I think it's still working on. No, actually, we. Uh, we are planning of growing uh, uh, horizontally, uh, translating the products. So right now we, uh, we have the products in Italian and English. And of course, we, uh, I mean, we also sell uh, English products in uh, um, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, France, uh, but to have uh, uh, the products in Spanish and, Fr and French uh, and uh, German, uh, it's going to, of course, be completely different. And um, we are planning new pro new products. So as Andrea was telling, uh, uh, we're gonna have a, a fabula for nonfiction, and we're gonna have a fabula for kids going out soon. Great, and that's that one is gonna be uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really good. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make a kid just for using that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that sounds fantastic, and uh, you know, anything that's encouraging creativity and writing in, in kids is particularly good as well. And that's something that, uh, in the public speaking arena, we're we're working to try and get kids starting these kinds of things sooner as well, because these are the the sooner you start developing those sorts of skills, the more talent and uh, the will have swimming around us the more creativity as well and uh, and we need a lot more of it i guess right now in times of, of lockdown people may be using these resources even more and uh, and maybe some people are finally getting around to writing that book or creating that speech that they've been wanting to do right but uh, i think that's particularly good what what have what have you guys been doing to entertain yourself during your uh, lockdown period yeah. work. <laughs> <That's> work. <laughs> it's not much like me <laughs> but, you're, but, you're, but you're keeping things going looking forward to being able to get outside again right yeah yeah that, that's for sure yeah let's say that for uh, our company it's completely uh, online uh, it didn't change uh, so much for us i mean apart from the fact that i uh, i'm like uh, i will kill for a run because here in italy they also uh, we're not allowed to go out uh, for running so it's like mm -hmm. crazy and uh yeah so we are basically we are working more than before because yeah. we are always on the computer and we are i'm reading a lot that's good but uh you know and cooking basically what everyone <laughs> is doing now <laughs> yeah it's very italian very italian <laughs> the, sooner, the sooner life starts returning back to some sort of normality the better right and uh being able to get outside, so uh, I look forward to that along with you. And I'm sure I, I want to reflect your time, of course. I want to start wrap, wrapping things up a bit, but just to get uh, people are going to want to hopefully find, come and find out more about you and your cards. What's going to be the best way for them to do that? Okay, uh, sefirot.it. That, that's for sure. That, that's our main website. And uh, and then if they if they just want the, to know more about uh, the Cicero deck, that's probably the case. Then Cicero that deck dot com. Yeah, fantastic. If you if you go to the to our website, that is a safe road, as you were saying. There's also we have a creative bulletin in which we uh, tell people what we are doing and why we are doing that, and that's quite 
interesting. So maybe. Yeah, I'm signed up for that myself. It's definitely worth signing up for, yeah. And well. And what was the name of the site for them to go and have a play with the Intuity deck uh, if they want to do that? Ah, uh, yeah, it's uh, intuity.it. Intuity.it. I, I do recommend it. The, the, Im the images on the cards are absolutely beautiful and I love, I love the whole pack. So thank you. Thank you to both of you for coming and, and being on the show. And of course, we want people to go and check out the cards and use them and give you, give you, their, give you their feedback and come and give you some recommendations and recommend them to your friends and, uh, and use them with your clients, or, or all of those things. Is there, is there a, a, any message or final thoughts that you would like to leave everyone with today? That's, that's difficult. Yeah, <laughs> the, Matteo is the wise one. <laughs> I come to you for a pearl of wisdom, Matteo. Oh my God. Uh, no, okay, okay, yeah, so something if, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose the audience uh, you told us it's, uh, it's for people that are into public speaking, right? Uh, 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 certainly a large part, uh, but yeah. uh, maybe others as well. Okay, I, will, uh, I would like to say, okay, it's something about CISO that I think it's uh, important. Um, uh, since we made the CICERO, I have to say that uh, uh, our public sk speaking skills are really improved. And uh, not just for speaking in public, but also for communicating. So for uh, writing the script for uh, uh, a video, for, um, for uh, writing uh, uh, the, the text of uh, a landing page, also for presenting a product. I mean, we always use that same uh, structure and it's uh, helping a lot. So uh, even if you don't want to speak in public, I, uh, I really think that uh, at least uh, to me, it was super useful. So uh, any kind of content creation, I could see it yeah. could be useful, yeah. Fantastic. I think that's a great idea. I, I love the cards. I, I fell in love with them right away. I loved the idea as soon as I saw your, your ad on Facebook for them. And, uh, and when they arrived, I just uh, fallen even more in love with them as I keep working with them. So, um, and your, your webinars, I do think people, you know, if your webinars are available on your website, people should definitely go and watch them because they just gave so much more insight into how to, to use them and make the most of these packs as well. So even without that, I think you're going to get a lot of value, but the, there's more value to be had. And so yeah, get that and get the max. Thank you both for your time today. It's been a real pleasure to have you on, on my podcast. And so thank you to agreeing to that. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and I hope we'll get the chance to, to connect again in the future. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure you like and subscribe. There are some great episodes coming up with some amazing guests and I wouldn't want you to miss a single one. If you think you'd be a great guest on the podcast or you know someone who would, I'd love to hear from you. And always, I'm happy to get any feedback that might help to improve the show. As a coach and trainer, I work with service business owners, coaches, trainers, speakers, authors in presentation skills, both online and in person. I help people to create and deliver additional products and services, including webinars that make sales and to add residual income to your business. I teach and train the tools of ethical influence and persuasion that can help you to stand out in the marketplace, to step up as a leader and to communicate more effectively with clients, customers and colleagues. If you would like to book in a free 20 minute no obligation discovery call with me to find out if working with Present Influence is right for you, click the link in the show notes. Alternatively, visit presentinfluence.com, click on the contact page and you will find the link to book in there. I look forward to connecting with you and I look forward to you joining me again on the next episode of the Loki podcast.